Hey there everyone, this is Cloud Chief, and in today's video I'm going over the new Dynamis content that was recently released, Dynamis Sandy Divergence. If you did old school Dynamis back in the day, then you will actually feel right at home because this seems to be almost a direct cutout from the old school Dynamis. There are some, of course, changes and it doesn't feel as big as the old school Dynamises were, but it has the same basic mechanics and feel of it. And it really brings back, you know, that large group and making sure you're working together as a team and pulling. Just to note though, there is a 60 hour lockout from when you've entered the new Dynamis. So because of that, there's a lot of information that is still kind of up in the air and not sure. So I will be making another guide and revisiting at some point that I'll go into much more detail and be sure about some things. This is just going to be giving as much information as I'm aware of and even give tips that would be my best guesses, but it's not going to be 100% accurate. To be able to enter the new Dynamis, you need a new key item. And to get this, you will have to gone through and clear Dynamis Tav. So make sure that you've gone through and beaten Diablos and gotten the key item for clearing that. Once you've cleared Tav, then go ahead and head to Ruelude Gardens and go near the auction house. You'll see a little sparkly light and when you talk to it you'll actually have a goblin up here and this is how you're going to get access to the new dynamis you need to trade a hundred piece and any one hundred piece will do so just go ahead and get that whether you're gonna go farm or just buy it out of someone's bazaar or off the auction house and then trade it to him and then he will give you the new key item that is a permanent key item and this will allow you to enter the new dynamis zone the entrance to the new Dynamis Zone is in South Sandy by the East Gate. So right by the zone line to East Ronifair. To be able to enter the new Dynamis, you need at least three party members and they all have to have this new key item. You can have up to a full alliance though. As for your party setup, I'm going to highly recommend that you have something similar to what an old school Dynamis party setup would be. You're going to want to have a puller, at least two tanks, a couple nukers and sleepers, of course some healers, and then melees to burn down the mobs. Your puller wants to be very careful when pulling as things link. However, everything seems to be by sight and at least sandy. We'll have to see how it happens in other zones. I'm not 100% sure on stones though. Old school Dynamis stones you used to aggro to sound, so I'm not confirmed on that. But I have confirmed that all the mobs do only link by sight. First, make sure that your puller is pretty confident in pulling. Since mobs link by sight, you want to make sure that you're timing your pulls correctly so that way you're not getting additional links. By getting additional links, it can definitely put a lot of strain on the rest of the party and can very easily cause a wipe. So your puller wants to make sure he's very skilled and good at timing pulls. As soon as the mobs come in, you want to have your sleepers ready to go ahead and sleep all the ads. At that point, you're also going to want to have the nukers, which would likely also be your sleepers, then go start nuking down the stones. You do not want to melee these stones as feeding them TP, they can do some pretty nasty AoE TP moves that can definitely take out some of your alliance if they are, have less defense or a little lower HP from just getting hit by other moves. So it's best to just nuke these down and not melee them because that's just going to burn them down before they'll get a chance to do a TP move. All melees in the alliance want to make sure they have auto target turned off. This is very important because you're going to end up killing mobs and you want to make sure that you're not waking up mobs and taking longer to kill them than need be. It's best to have all your melees focus one mob and for that you're going to want one of your tanks to go ahead and be the assist. So 
melees, make sure you have auto target turned off and go ahead and set up an assist macro that will be fort slash assist space whatever name of the person you're assisting and make sure you're using that to know which mob you should get on. Also be sure that you have a backup person for assist just in the off chance that the main assist goes down. If the main assist goes down you're gonna have party members then standing around not knowing what to do or at some point if people realize that it's down you might have people jumping on you know multiple different mobs which is just going to cause more of a problem if you already have some people down so make sure you're, that someone else is aware that they should be the next assist and say something in party when or if the main assist goes down as for clearing the zone the boss is right by the north sandy zone line from my understanding, the boss is up as soon as you enter the zone, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So you should be able to just start making your way there if you're just going for the clear. The boss has a ton of HP, so make sure that all the mobs in the area are cleared out and that your party is ready to go before you engage. After you engage it, make sure everyone is all the way up, at least on the wall to the far north side. Because as soon as the boss dies, a ton of adds will spawn a little south of the zone line. So if you're not there, you're going to go ahead and aggro. And chances are, since you just beat the boss, your alliance isn't going to be ready to take more adds. And it could very easily cause a wipe. Now let's move on to the actual drops. Before you beat the Mega Boss, all the ads should be dropping Rusted Identification Cards, and they have a very low chance of dropping Foot Shards. These items are used to upgrade your Relic plus one to plus two. After you've beaten the Mega Boss and the new ads spawn, these new ads will then drop the Black Ant Identification Cards, and they have a chance of dropping Void Footwear. These are used to upgrade to the plus three pieces. To be able to upgrade a piece to first the plus two, then the plus three, you'll one, have needed to enter Dynamis on whatever job, and that will allow you to upgrade your plus one to the plus two, and then that same job needs to have killed the Mega Boss to be able to upgrade it to plus two to plus three. You can tell this by talking to the Goblin, and he will only give you the option of upgrading pieces on jobs that have either entered and then cleared for the corresponding piece. The Russet Identification Cards, Blackened Identification Cards, Beastman's Medals, and Kindred's Medals are all tradable and auction houseable. So you can actually buy all these items and as long as you clear on the job, and you have the plus one piece you should be able to go ahead and then upgrade it to the plus three piece with nothing but gill so here is the full breakdown of items that you can obtain and that you'll need to actually upgrade to the plus two and plus three pieces you can turn in a hundred rusted identification cards for one beastman medal and you can trade a hundred black and identification cards for one kindred medal you can trade three Beastman Medals for a Foot Shard and three Kindred Medals for one Void Shard. To upgrade your plus one armor to your plus two, you need two Foot Shards. Then you need three items off of the Auction House, which I believe are Delve Craft Items, and then one additional Craft Item. To upgrade the plus two to the plus three piece, you need three foot shards, three void footwares, and then three craftable items off of the auction house. If you wanted to take your plus one relic piece and upgrade it to your plus three relic piece only using identification cards, you would need a total of 1,500 rusted identification cards and 900 black and identification cards. By having that many cards, you can convert to whatever else you need so that way you can upgrade the piece, not counting the delve craft items you can buy off the auction house. Also to note, after you've beaten the Mega Boss, you do get a 30 minute time extension. 
I am not 100% sure, but I've heard people say that there is another boss that pops once you've killed the first boss, and by killing him, you get an additional 30 minute time extension. Therefore, if that is true, you can spend up to two hours in Dynamis farming. I would also venture to say that the second boss, when you kill him, has a chance of dropping kindred metals, whereas the first boss does drop beastman metals. As for me personally, I did enjoy doing the new Dynamis. It does feel a lot like the old Dynamis. While it doesn't exactly capture the old feeling that the old school Dynamis used to have, it's definitely a welcomed event that I am looking forward to continuing doing in the future. And that's pretty much it for the information that I currently have on Dynamis. I will be releasing a newer guide at some point that will update this information. Thank you for checking out my guide. Feel free to leave a comment for any information that's not currently in this guide. Or if there's any questions that you have, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer it. I hope you enjoyed this video and may you have success in all you do.